I want you to imagine with me for a few moments, use your imagination. You've left the house to go to fulfill a particular objective. And as you've left your house to fulfill this objective, walking down the street, you notice something strange and amazing. People, they stop what they're doing when they see you, and they come up to you, and they start to shake your hand, and they start to praise you, and they start to say, it's amazing what you're doing, where you're going, the time that you're spending, this is really amazing, and we take our hats off to you. And as you go further down the road, further down the street, people, they come up to you, and they line the pathway, and they tip their hat to you. They kind of bow to you out of honor of what you are doing. Now, if this really took place, wouldn't this be an amazing thing? That but the path that you are walking, people, they flock to you, they surround you, and they honor you. This is core, of course, is from the imagination. It's not real. But there's something which is more real than that, and more true than that. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the hadith, Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilm, sahalallahu lahu tariqan ila jannah. Whoever takes a path, an objective, walking down a path, a way to seek knowledge, knowledge of the Sharia, then Allah makes his path easy to Jannah. Now allow this to blow your minds, allow this to amaze you. And verily the Prophet said, and the angels, they come down from whatever they were doing, wherever they were floating, wherever they were flying, those of them in the vicinity, they come down and they lower their wings out of honor and out of praise and out of gratitude and out of happiness for the one who is walking the path, seeking the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This comes from the words of the Prophet Be amazed. This really takes place. It's not something from the imagination. For those special group of people who walk this path, it takes place. The Prophet ﷺ continued in this hadith. And he said, He said the Prophet ﷺ, and verily the student of knowledge, everything in the creation seeks forgiveness for him, even the fish that are found in the oceans, even the fish that are in the sea. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the same hadith, Inna fadl alim al al abid ka fadl al qamr al asail al kawakib. That verily the status of the alim, the scholar, over the general worshipper is like the status of the moon over the rest of the stars. Because you see, the moon, it stands out brightly more so than the rest of the stars do. And the Prophet said, and the Prophet وسلم, said that verily the scholars, the righteous of them, they are the inheritors of the prophets. And verily the prophets, they do not leave behind them any form of wealth as inheritance, but rather they leave behind them knowledge. So whoever takes from the shari knowledge, then they have taken something which is great and something which is valuable. So when you hear this hadith and a hadith like it, that amaze the mind of the one who truly ponders the words of the one he loves, Muhammad Wasallam, then he says to himself, why don't I be from these people? Why don't I try to take the same path? Yes, it's true that most likely I will not become a scholar. It's possible that I may not even become a real student of knowledge. But let me get something from what is gained of the rewards in taking this path. And it's something that we should opt to do. And it's something that we should encourage one another to do. The hadith, it mentioned that everything in the heavens and the earth seek forgiveness for the one who is seeking knowledge. You may wonder to yourself and you should wonder, why is that? Why is it that they are seeking knowledge for the one who is treading this path? Well, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلُنَا وَأَنزَلْنَا لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِزَانِ لِيَقُومُ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that the reason we sent the messengers and the reason we gave them the revelation 
was so that they would enjoin justice upon mankind. So the alim, the scholar, and the student of knowledge, when they learn the religion and they go out and they teach it to the people, what transformation takes place on the earth? The transformation that takes place is that when this knowledge permeates the societies and we people accept this knowledge and they start to live upon this knowledge, this revelation, they live then with justice. Justice between them and Allah Azawajal, that they worship none other except Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Justice between them and the rest of the creation, that they treat each other in the best of ways and they ensure that they never oppress one another. All of this, why? Because of the revelation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So that's why everybody seeks forgiveness for the one who brings this about, which is the alim and the student of knowledge. So we see that this role is a very important role and everybody should want to be involved in this. And the Muslim, the believer, who has chosen this faith to be the way he wants to live in this dunya, should never be happy to be from those who do not understand or do not have knowledge of the fundamentals of his religion. And you may claim that you have the knowledge of the fundamentals of this religion. But be humble. Go and sit with somebody of knowledge and see in reality how much do you really know? How much do you really have which is correct information, correct knowledge? So it's imperative that everybody removes from themselves ignorance. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, مَنْ يُرِدَ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرٍ يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Whoever Allah wants good for, he will give them understanding of the religion. So the mafhum al-mukhalafa, the opposite understanding of the hadith, that if Allah doesn't want good for you, if good is not written for you, you will remain in a state of ignorance. You will not have the knowledge that you require to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you please Allah if you don't know what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can you worship Allah? We are not like the Christians. We do not make the religion up as we go along. You have to base your actions upon evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah and the statement of the scholars so that you can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Tabarani collects a hadith and it's authenticated by Shaykh Al-Bani rahimahullah ta'ala where the Prophet sallallahu said, Man ghada ila al-masjidi, la yuridu illa an yata'allama khayr aw ya'lamahu, kana lahu ka'aji hajin ta'man hijjatuhu. Whoever amongst you leaves and goes to a masjid to seek knowledge of the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then for him is the likeness of the reward of the one who has gone on hajj. And his hajj is a complete hajj with no mistakes whatsoever. So hear this and encourage yourself to get to the masajid, go to the places where the knowledge is being taught and learn that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take with you your families. Ensure that you take with you your young ones because the young ones, we want them to be the future generation who will bear this flag, this responsibility of spreading Islam. But if we don't bring them up loving the words of Allah and the Prophet from an early age, then how will they bear this responsibility? They will end up like us. We lived our lives and we didn't do much for the sake of Islam because we didn't spend our times loving the words and the words of the Prophet ﷺ, the words of Allah and the words of the Prophet ﷺ. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran to Muhammad ﷺ who says, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, records the words of the Prophet ﷺ saying that say, O Muhammad, that this is my path. I call upon it based upon clarity, upon clear knowledge. Me and anybody else who follows me. See the point in the verse? If you are a true follower of Muhammad ﷺ, as mentioned by Imam Ibn Qayyim, then you have to be one of those who call to what Muhammad ﷺ called to. You have to call to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, but how can you do that if you do not have the knowledge of the Qur'an and the Sunnah? So spend some time. It doesn't take much effort, but spend some time. Find out, are there places where people are teaching in the masajid? Are there places where knowledge is being taught of how to recite the Qur'an? Are there places being taught where the meanings of the Qur'an are being taught and other such lessons taking place? If there are, then make sure you make an effort to attend such gatherings so that you and your family can be from those who learn and spread this great revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم
Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah. From the love and the honoring of this knowledge is to honor those who have spent years and decades learning this knowledge and spreading this knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa hu wal malaika wa ulul ilmi qa'iman bil qisq la ilaha illa hu al azizul hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifies to the greatest testimony that has ever been made in the universe, which is that there is none in truth to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And alongside that, the angels also testify, and also the people of knowledge. So as Imam Ibn Qayyim, he said, look, Allah Azawajal chose himself to testify to this, and he chose alongside him the malaika and also the people of knowledge. So out of respect for these people of knowledge and for what they carry and what they do, we should never be from those people who make fun of them. Never be from those ignorant people who feel that they can make fun of the scholars and they can talk about them in an evil manner. They can ridicule the fatawa that they come with. Yes, we are not a people like the Christians who blindly follow our scholars. No, that doesn't take place. But we have a huge amount of respect for what they carry and what they teach and the service that they are employed by Allah Azawajal to do for the creation. So it's never a case that we backbite them. We don't sit in our gatherings ridiculing what they come with, if they are from those who are righteous, if they are from those who are known to be upon the truth. The Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, Inna Allah Ta'ala la yaqbitu al-ilm intiza'an yantazi'uhu min al-ibad that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala doesn't remove the knowledge suddenly from the chests of the people. But rather, he removes knowledge from the earth as we come closer and closer to the end of times by removing the ulama, the death of the ulama one by one. Until there will come a time when there is no ulama left which is like our times. You find very few ulama now in the cities. In places, it's very hard to get access to an alim. When this happens, the Prophet ﷺ said that people would take ignorant people as ones to be asked. And these ignorant people, they will answer the fatawa and they will mislead others and they will mislead themselves. So you see that the presence of ulama is like a gate. It prevents falsehood from being spread. Because every time the alim or the student of knowledge, he sees falsehood being spread in society, he writes about what is being spread. Or he speaks out if he is able to about what is being spread. He is like the gate as the prophets were between the shaitan and misguidance. So if we do not respect the ulama, if we do not attend their gatherings, if we do not hold them in high esteem, how then will we take knowledge from them? But if we ridicule them and don't respect them, rather we will lower their status in the sight of people and people will turn away from them and they will go to those who are ignorant and ask those who are ignorant for knowledge instead. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he raises us in knowledge which benefits and yet he makes us from those who spend some time learning that which is important for our religion, learning the fundamentals which will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد